Well, it's time for us to get started. I uh, want to welcome everyone to uh, TCF 20. And uh, I'm going to introduce our, uh, our first uh, talk here today. Uh, this is uh, by a group from uh, very well-known Vintage Computer Federation, normally referred to as VCF. Uh, our, uh, our first speakers are uh, Jeff Brace, who is the vice president of, uh, of, of VCF and uh, has been around the uh, computer uh, antique, what I call antique or vintage computer uh, interest area for quite a few years. And he's uh, being assisted, and I apologize, I'm not very good at pronouncing names, uh, Dean Notam Akola. Is that, I have that right, uh, Dean? Close enough. No Tarnacola. That's fine. Thank you, Al. Well, I apologize in advance. Uh, as my students no know, I, I tend to use the fir their first names. So today, that's not always that easy. And uh, uh, you've also been involved in this area. <laughs> and uh, both uh, Dean and uh, Jeff have been involved with the uh, IT area of computing, computer engineering. Uh, and they're going to talk to us about uh, vintage computing, and particularly uh, VCF. So uh, I'll turn it over to the two of you. All right. Thank you, Al. Uh, thank you for inviting us. We're always glad to participate with Trenton Computer Festival. I um, can't even remember how many years that we've been participating in it, but I think um, it's been since the very beginning, in fact, of our organization. So. Um, Part of the reason why we're doing this talk is uh, because, you know, this organization has been around for quite a while and we wanted to actually document it. I mean, sometimes you just sort of form a group and you see what happens and you don't know where it's going to go. And then now you're here 15 or plus years later and you're like, oh, we're still around. Um, we must be doing something right. So we wanted to start to record the history of that before it's forgotten, before people start to forget. And um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of digging and research. Uh, so I personally started um, in the organization in 2008. I uh, originally collected Commodore 64s um, and that was my first home computer. And then every summer I would bring it out and wanted to play with it. And then I would want it to go to different computer festivals, but they were always far away. They were California um, or they were in Chicago or through Toronto. So then I found out this vintage computer festival East in 2008 and I showed up. And then from there, I, um, I started to get involved. You know, they've, the, one of the members, he's, he's uh, the president of the group, found out that I live locally. So then I started to get involved with it a, a lot. So um, the beginnings of the organization. So we have to go back to 1997. In 1997, um, a guy named Salam Abraham, he was, he, you know, made a post on CC Talk, you know, which is classic computing discussion list. And just to see if people, other people were interested in these, these older computers. I mean, this was 1997. So, you know, you know, there were people, you know, the history of the vintage computers, the seventies and the eighties, and then, you know, different companies started to disappear like Commodore and other companies merged and then everything either became, you know, a PC clone or a Macintosh. So at this point, then people are starting to get nostalgic. They're like, even though it's 1997, it's like, all right, well, I used to have a Commodore that was 15 years ago. Um, so he posted on there and also on news, Usenet, and he thinks it was the CompSys Apple II news group. And 
at that time, there was not a lot of vintage computer, vintage computer discussions. So it was sort of a new term because it was still rel relatively recent. So he was just looking to see if there's other people interested in these older machines. And he was surprised that there was a lot of interests. Um, you know, people develop personal attachments and that's the, how a lot of uh, our organization and the hobbies started. People were attached to them either as a home computer or a work computer. So in 1997, he posted that and there was a lot of interest. And so then he created the Vintage Computer Festival in 1997 um, in California. And I, it was not called West at this point. It was just computer, Vintage Computer Festival. So we got a bunch of people, we got a bunch of great speakers. Um, so sometimes you get these great speakers early on before they become famous or or get busy or, or life circumstances so there was a lot of great speakers at that and the, the mission of this festival was to promote the preservation of obsolete computers they haven't used vintage yet obsolete computers by offering attendees a chance to experience the technologies the people and the stories that embody, embody the remarkable tale of the computer revolution because there's a lot of different stories um, a lot of people that did collecting because they're very unique. So there was all kinds of workshops. There was like consignment, people buying and selling, but you know, it was great. So then it, it was successful. So the first one was in Al Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton, California. So since it was successful, he did it again. The next one was in Santa Clara Convention Center in Santa Clara, California. Then he did another one in the same spot the next year, so 97, 98, 99. So obviously it's, it's working. So then he decided to sort of branch out. In 2000, there was a VCF Europa was um, created. So he started to branch out at this point. Um, other people were interested, uh, you know, things, these computers were getting older and then becoming sort of collectible. Um, and he continued to the California um, Vintage Computer Festival. Um, VCF East was created in 2001. Now, the first one was, the first two were actually in Massachusetts. VCF East 1.0 and VCF East 2.0. So at this point, they had the numbering system, sort of like computer software operating systems 1.0, 2.0. And that sort of held for quite a while. Um, so Vintage Computer Festival continued, VCFEs continued. So around 2005, um, the Evan Koblenz, he had, you know, he had, I guess, responded to someone else, Andy Myers, he had posted something on, uh, maybe it was CC Talk, maybe it was another one. I have to find out exactly. He posted like, is there other people interested in these vintage computers? And I think that at the time Evan had lived in Boston, but he was moving back to New Jersey. So he started to talk with him and they found that there are other people interested. So they all decided to meet at the Trenton Computer Festival. Um, this is back in 2005. And so they had, you know, some computers on display. They all got together. They shut off their computers. And at a dinner um, after the show, um, they were all talking and someone said to Evan, here's $20, open up a bank account. And he's like, why do I want to open a bank account? We're just a bunch of guys just hanging out talking about computers. Who would ever thought that we would have become what we are now? But he opened up a bank account and they created March, Mid-Atlantic Retro Computing Hobbyists. Um, and so at the time, it was a for-profit company. Um, and subsequently, the word spread, people started to donate things. And then somewhere along the line, Evan ran into Fred Carl, who was the director of InfoAge. Now, what is InfoAge? InfoAge is, um, right now, it's a science and history museum. Now, there's a lot of history um, of this organization. It goes back all the way back to Marconi. So Marconi actually had a tower there and part of the tower is still at this location. 
Um, there and then when World War II happened, there was a lot of Cold War research, radar. Um, the there was a Diana project where the the first um, was there, it's a radio telescope, and the first weather pictures were actually taken there. And so there was a lot of Cold War research, integrated circuits. So there was a lot of history there. So Fred Carl had um found out that the army was going to decommission this and sell off the land and he said no we got you know we got to save this so you know over the years he worked to save the the land the buildings and eventually became a national historic monument so in any way um InfoAge said you know we're starting to look for museums and so they evan and carl met and they said, here's a little space here because they had to renovate a lot of these spaces because they were in terrible condition. The army just sort of abandoned them and um, they were not in great condition. And so we had a basically about a 10 by 10 room as our museum. And we started setting up some artifacts in this museum and it was great. So, um, people started to donate different items. And then we have these empty where you empty um, building sections or we call it the H building It's a big section. So people started donating things large and small um, and it got to be a lot. So, you know, cause we're looking to preserve it and tell the history of it. Like where do these computers come from? I mean, that's sort of like the beginning of our sort of our mission to, um, to to preserve the history because you, nowadays your kid comes in a museum is 10 years old how does he know where this this iphone that he has where did it come from how did the technologies evolve over time and so that's part of it um so we continued um with um that we started so we started the museum vcf east now, um, Salam says, you know, I want to, you know, you know, continue doing BCFEs, but maybe the person, I can't do it in Boston. I want someone else to do it. So Evan said yes, but as long as it's at InfoH, because that's local to him. So VCFE 3.0 um, was at InfoH. So that was in 2006. So it was the first one at the InfoH. First, it was called InfoH Learning Center, then InfoH Science Center. Now it's called InfoH Science and History Museums. So 2006, VCF East at InfoH is born. Um, it starts out really small, it's just a one day event. Um, and then over the years, it in, you know gets bigger. It goes the next day, it's a two day event. Um, and then we, get, we move into a bigger museum space. We originally had a museum space was a 10 by 10, and then we got basically five rooms that are each about 10 by 10. So uh, we filled out those, we had different themes for sort of a chrono chronological aspects to it. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of discussion also. So the, the group starts to build up membership, uh, the museum, um, the VCF East, and we start to also go to other events. We continue to go to Trenton Computer Festival. Um, we go to Hope, which is every two years. Uh, we try to go to other events. Um, there's other smaller events in Pennsylvania. Uh, so we try to branch out and in, to you know, talk about our organization. Um, <clears throat> so, so VCF uh, as the festival, because there's you have to distinguish between Vintage Computer Festival and Vintage Computer Federation. Federation is not born yet. So the festival continues and it's growing. So at some point we want to grow more. We want to be national. We uh, feel that being a for-profit as March is sort of limited. So <clears throat> it's decided that March is dissolved. And then Vintage Computer Federation as a nonprofit 501c3 is created. Um, and some of the people uh, like Evan is now becomes the president of uh, Vintage Computer Federation. Um, and I was also one of the founding members of that, as well as Corey Cohen. 
Um, so then we said, all right, we need more people involved with this. So we added uh, Bill Degnan, who was also involved at March one point, and uh, Eric Klein. Eric Klein had vintage, it's a vintage dash computer, uh, .net, I believe. Um, he had that website as well as the forums. So we took over those forums. So the forums that we have now were originally started by Eric Klein. So now we have five people on this national board. And um, <clears throat> we start to grow. We, um, we start our, we reboot the VCF, we're now it's gonna call the West. So Vintage Computer Festival started 2005 and it, I'm sorry, it was started in 1997, went to 2007 and it stopped. Um, Salam couldn't do it anymore for personal reasons and no one else was um, interested in taking over as showrunner. So it stopped in 2007. So then in 2016, now where Vintage Computer Federation is rebooted. So now we call it VCF West. Um, and we change it to a Roman numeral type of system. So we have VCF West XI. So the last one, 2007, was 10.0, and now we have XI number 11. So um, that one is at Computer History Museum. So just to go back a little bit with the uh, VCF Vintage Computer Festival, it started out as at uh, one location and then eventually went to Computer History Museum in 2003 and was there ever since. Um, so it was great. It's a great partnership with them. It's a perfect place to go because people can go in and they can go to our show. They can go to the museum, which is a great museum. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> in fact, it has just reopened up finally after being shut down with COVID. So it's, it's good that people can go back there. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2018, we started another one, Vintage Computer Festival Pacific Northwest. So that was at the Living Computer Museum. So um, we did that 2018, 2019, and we were going to do one in 2020, but COVID happened and that had to be canceled. Um, so the showrunner did not want it to continue. At that point, um, there was no one to replace them. So um, Pacific Northwest um, didn't continue. Um, and I should also mention just briefly that um, the Vintage Computer Festival, which started in California in 1997, it branched down. It branched out to many places. Europa in 2000, East I mentioned already in 2001. There was an Italia in 2004. Midwest, UCF Midwest was in 2005. Southwest, I guess there was a few of them in 2009. And then Southeast, 2013, which that one also still continues. Um, so um, we continue having, as a Vintage Computer Federation, we continue having uh, our festivals, VCF Easts, um, in 2015, 2016, we're still having an info science center. VCF West continues. Um, there was one break um, in VCF East. Um, I think it was some scheduling problem. We originally were sort of like around the September time frame, and then we we moved to a May time frame, um, April and May. And then there was a point at which St. Hurricane Sandy hit. So there was a year that we didn't even have the festival. But in the meantime, it's growing. We're getting uh, more speakers uh, or bigger speakers and we're getting more exhibits. Um, we're filling up the InfoH campus. We're, we're growing. Um, you know, once Sandy hits, then they start to they renovate some area and uh, for, for people that are helping with the recovery. And we eventually had that space. Once the Sandy recovery started to tone down, we we're actually able to use that space, which is helpful to us because um, for a few years, we actually had to have some tents outside, which we were forced to because it was just a lack of space, but it was not the most pleasant in terms of um, 
of lighting and, and comfort. So um, we're glad to have this space. So VCF Vinci Computer Festival continues. The Vinci Computer Federation grows. Um, we, in about 2016, we, the, our museum part expands to double that size. We had five separate rooms and that doubles and we have a bigger space. And so we move everything over there. In the meantime, we have a, we had moved, uh, we had a warehouse space and we moved it to a different section. Um, so, um, it's, that's one part of what we do is 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 to to what we call rescue we rescue different items you know people are always looking to get rid of these items either they don't know if they have value or if they know you know they don't either they're some relative and they just want to dispose of it so there's a lot of rescues that we have um so managing the collection in the warehouse is is a big um issue to to manage because we can't take everything all right so we do what we can to manage what we have um and uh we will do is you know at some point we we had to get a little bit more organized so we have uh We have a Evan as executive director, and then so we create a steering committee to help sort of organize um, things as we're growing bigger. Uh, the national board um, created the steering committee on the mid-Atlantic levels. So the mid-Atlantic are generally um, the mid-Atlantic states, you know, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, um, Delaware, Connecticut. So the National Board designated four people, uh, Dean Nodernicola, Tony, Tony Bogan, Adam Michelin, and Andy Diller. Um, and they added Chris. So the, the steering committee was a way for the members to have representation in the decisions of the organization, at least on the local level. So they created that steering committee and at first they were just designated it, but then um, on an annual basis in December, two of the members are actually voted in by the members themselves. Um, so over the years, we added different things outside of the festivals. We added repair workshops where we can meet together with each other and help each other repair things. Um, some of it's fellowship, people like to, uh be with like-minded people but it's also to to learn how to repair things to get different ideas to have different tools for different people uh to also help to maintain the vintage computer federation artifacts because um they're always going to need repair like like the living computer museum we, we like to be hands-on with our museum we like to have people actually use the computers and uh they will need repair because of that. So we have different members help us to repair those. And sometimes we want to have, you know, we'll take, we want to switch, we started to is we started to switch out machines. Like, so then some machine in the warehouse, maybe it doesn't work. Someone has to look at it. So we need someone to help repair that. So we have the repair workshop that started out a few times a year. Um, and then it became something on a monthly basis. Um, we continue to go with, to outside events to promote ourselves. Um, I had mentioned Cretton Computer Festival, Hope, and Maker Fair until its demise, um, which was, you know, great. We uh, were able to get out and, and show people what we did. Um, the steering committee, when that was formed, it also created some subcommittees. We had an inventory subcommittee, which helped uh, organize the warehouse. So the warehouse is a big um big thing to manage so we have a lot of things people are always donating and sometimes they're duplicates so we will sell them off as surplus you know you have commodore 64s there are millions of them made but so we'll sell them off as surplus but we'll give them to the members we want to have you know uh other members to enjoy them um and we there's certain things like documentation books 
a lot of this is online. So if it was already online, then we can we can give it away, sell it, or recycle it because we, you know, as it is, the warehouse um, is not in an HVAC environment. It's not climate controlled. Um, and that's one of the things that we're sort of striving to as we're trying to get bigger, we are trying to, um, we're currently involved in moving their warehouse from one section to another because um, of roof leaking and, and such. Um, eventually we want to, I mean, it's a, it would take a lot of money, but we want to have, actually have a climate controls. Um, so that's one of the things we're striving to through donations. Um, so in the meantime, we're trying to minimize what we have, um, put items in the hands of collectors that, you know, really would enjoy them and preserve them. Um, and part of that, I, I mentioned this, it, we created an acquisition subcommittee. The acquisition subcommittee sort of is a filter because people are always looking to donate things and sometimes it's sort of off topic. Um, there's a big debate about what is vintage computers. Um, everybody's gonna have a different definition depending on which museum you are and what, who you're talking to. For us, we decided I believe it was around 1995, maybe 1997, around that area as the cutoff as vintage computers. And now some people want to go further and it's all relative depending on when you were born. Um, but we, you know, if people come in and say, here's like, you know, Windows 2000 CDs and books, you know, we're not going to really be interested in that. But so we have to have an acquisition subcommittee to sort of filter that out. Um, and recently we created a curation committee. So we have, you know, we still have a legacy of being sort of a hobbyist type of um, group, um, but we wanted to sort of upgrade our museum. So we started a create curation com committee to sort of get signage, um, check to see about how the computers, the, the that we put them on the carts, maybe lower them. So maybe children can have easier access to actually use them. Um, and then we're gonna need this, especially before our next step. So I can call this Museum 4.0. So we had the 1.0, which is 10 by 10 area. And at a 2.0, which was five 10 by 10 areas. And the 3.0, which we have now, which was, you know, twice of the last one. So the 4.0 is a huge section. Um, we have, we call, again, I called H buildings, which is at Info H. It's a huge section. Um, it's unrenovated. Um, so there's going to be need for donations for that, to renovate that, to uh, buy the materials for that. Um, so that's another reason why we're trying to step things up to, to make ourselves, um, uh, a little bit better for, you know, corporations. I mean, individuals can donate and that's great, but you know, when you're talking hundred thousand dollars, that's a lot of money to renovate a section and, and corporations can do that more easily. So we're looking to get into more of the education aspect of, of vintage computing and that will be a lot more appealing to corporations. Um, we also started outreach to other computer museums, System Source, uh, LSSM, which is Large Scale Systems Museum um, in Pittsburgh, um, and some others. There, I believe there are some in Europe. Um, and we try to, you know, work with CHM, but they're much higher than us, and they'll help us. But you know, they're not sort of on our level, but they will help us as as they can. Um, we, we started a swap meet. Um, one of the things we did with, at their festivals is we did consignment, which is people would come in uh, to sell their things. They, they put it on a table and we would watch it and we would take 15%. So we decided why not try swap meets? Um, and we found this huge park, open parking lot space near InfoH and we started the swap meet in November. We, we wasn't sure, we weren't sure how it would, would be, um, but we got 20 people come out and it was great. So that showed that we can do it successfully and there was a lot of interest. Um, and then we did it again, April, 2021, and it was triple the size. Um, so lots of interest, a lot of people enjoying it. 
And then we just recently did an indoor one. So the indoor one was a big challenge, obviously, because we couldn't put it all in one spot. We had to do it in two or three different sp spaces, um, but it was still successful. A lot of people were there. A lot of people were personally thanking me. You know, thank you. I sold a lot of this stuff. You know, my wife's happy that, you know, I get all this stuff out. I'm happy, got some money. So it was successful. And we plan on doing another one in October in the parking lot again, this outdoor. Um, and I also mentioned before the our museum and our collection. Um, yes, there's a lot of challenges, you know, first of all, we have it, we, we had uh, first, when we first had it, it was just stored on the floor, on pallets, then we got sort of shelving racks, and that helped a lot to organize it. Uh, but there's a constant challenge in stuff coming in from rescues and stuff going out and try to keep that organized and, cl and clean. Um, so there's a constant challenge with that. And we've, we've made some, some uh, good decisions in donating items to places that can better um, use them or accommodate them or have the space for them. Um, we had a Vax 9000 that we, do, you know, was donated to someone and he has the space and he's actually going to try to make this thing work. We didn't have any chance of doing that in the short term. Um, so that helps because that took up a lot of storage space. Um, and we're also going to loan. We have um, a working Univac 1219 in our museum. We have two sets of them. So we're going to actually loan one of those uh, sets to the System Source Museum. Um, and that's great that we can loan things. I mean, that's part of what we're going to want to try to do is sort of loan things to other museums. Um, and and they, maybe they can get that, you know, their version of work in their set. Um, and all right, so I mentioned the different version of the museum. So one of the things that I like sort of, I call three version 3.1, the version we have now is 3.0. And there's a 3.1 I say, because um, the museum had started out as chronological and that's great, You just one way you can do it. But we wanna have a little bit of fun and make it a little bit interesting. So we set up a section of the museum where um, there was an 80s bedroom. So we had fake wall paneling and shelves and uh, on the shelves were different 80s sort of memorabilia like movie posters and toys like a Star Wars, a Transformers, a Rubik's Cube and um, different movies like Monty Python and the Lord of the Rings, the cartoon. And so we set up this, this really fun it is bedroom and we set up Commodore 64 with a printer and print shop uh, and it was great. Um, that sort of made things a little bit more interesting. I think we were partially inspired because of the Living Computer Museum had a uh, Stranger Things bedroom thing. So we were like, let's do something fun like that. Um, and right next to that is sort of like an 80s or 90s office space, like what an office might look like with a phone and the computer and the different accessories. Uh, so we sort of changed things around with the museum to make it a little bit more fun. Um, and rotating exhibits in and out. So we want to make things interesting. We always had a featured artifact, which we would change periodically. Uh, we would change those out. Um, and some computers, they don't work or um, there's not good demos for them. We cycle them out and put in another one. So um, we, we had uh, the BOS computer um, there as a feature artifact. Right now we're gonna add a silicon graphics machine there. Um, we had um, a Apple II um, clone uh, province. It's like a, a Russian clone of the Apple II. Um, we had a Ukrainian um, Sinclair uh, clone it was interesting. So we have a lot of different things that we cycle in and out uh, to make it more interesting or we're constantly trying to make things more, you know, working. So uh, still looking for different uh, members to help uh, repair these things. And uh, one notable, another notable one is Xerox. One of the, I don't know which Xerox it is exactly, but 
it works. <laughs> it's a Xerox machine. It works. We have it working in the museum. People can come um, and use it. Um, it did need different repairs and things. And sometimes there was no um, documentation or schematics available. So people had to figure it out the hard way. Um, so we're very glad to have very talented uh, members to help repair these things. Um, so as I said, we are, um, we have future plans for our whole museum. Um, so we're always looking for volunteers to help us with either our events or daily um, um, activities to, to run this. You know, we're always looking for donations. You can send donations to us. Um, you can go through our website, vcfed.org or PayPal. You can send PayPal uh, donations to PayPal at vcfed.org. Um, or um, you can, if you're interested in volunteering, you can send a message to volunteers at vcfed.org. Um, and one last thing. Um, so I'm currently planning for our VCF East, Vintage Computer Festival East. It's in April. Um, we have a lot of, you know, big names, um, a lot of speakers. Um, uh, the originally VCF East was sort of like one keynote per day. Uh, one of the changes that I did um, was to have multiple speakers, sort of like a conference. So your conference would have uh, speakers throughout the day. People can go see the booths at the exhibits and they can go see the talks throughout the day. So we have multiple talks. Um, and that sort of started when COVID happened. We, you know, 2020, uh, we we're gonna have our show in April. COVID happened, we scheduled to October. COVID was still a problem. So we said, all right, let's go virtual and virtual. And that was actually very successful. Um, and then we're gonna have our, you know, back to our original schedule April. And COVID was still a problem in, in 2021. So we said, all right, let's go to October. Um, and then we sort of did a hybrid. One of the things with COVID is that it how, showed people how to have hybrid um, ways of, of doing in-person and virtual talkers. Um, so that was really successful, it was great. And this year is gonna even be greater. We have a lot of, one of the things that I like is that there's a like, a sort of like a reunion of the Commodore employees. You have Bill Hur, Dave Handy, Andy Finkel, R. Charpentier. He, you know, there is the anniversary of the Commodore 64. Um, we have Burger Becky, uh, she's coming. Not a lot of people know about her, but if you Google her, she's very interesting. She was um, early computer programmer. She did Bar's Tale and she continues to program to this day. So lots of great stuff happening with our shows. Um, always looking for volunteers um, and always looking for donations to help us grow. So um, that's it for my talk. Um, if we want to have any questions, uh, I'm open up to questions and Dean, you can always help me answer those if you're, if you're there. Um, anybody have any questions? We so just to start out, we have a comment in the chat here. Somebody said Heathkit H8 was my start, which is a uh, great. Um, we actually have a lot of uh, Heathkit enthusiasts in our group. Um, I don't know if you still have it, Chuck, and <laughs> made that uh, comment. But um, if you ever need help uh, maintaining it or repairing it or whatever, uh, you know, we have a lot of great people. Oh, you don't? Okay. So uh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that that's very cool. That was a true uh, hobbyist computer. Uh, that's very cool that you were uh, you were into that back back in the day there. Um, any uh, any other questions? Any questions about like how uh, like what we do, why we do it? Uh, I think Jeff, you know, that was a lot. Jeff uh, did a great job uh, describing our history and. Uh, you know what we're trying to do but uh if we can elaborate at all please yeah you know. <laughs> i i can comment uh on i i visited your place uh, several times and it's really impressive in fact that whole area uh at info age is is one that doesn't get enough publicity uh 
uh, around, uh, you know, New Jersey and for visitors, you know, the state should have it on their uh, on their list of, uh, of places to visit. Uh, it, 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 it is, I think, you know, I've been to other other computer museums and things like that, and some of them have, you know, more money, but uh, it it is uh, it is really compressed, impressive. I wonder how many people here have actually visited uh, InfoAge and your uh, display headquarters. All right, so someone is asking, have you thought about getting some more modern systems which will become vintage, they will be more readily available now? Well, so that is, for now, we sort of have a cutoff of about 1997. Um, there is some, you know, it all depends on who, you know, the decisions made by the steering committee as to what they wanted to, to do. You know, there's just, there's, there is some feeling that at some point we need to expand that a little bit or but we want to be very selective and the reason why is that we can't accept everything so if we expand our, our reach to more years then we're going to need more artifacts and so we're going to need more donation or so we're going to need more space um so that is part of the issue is, is space to store this stuff um so that's sort of part of the reason why i had a cutoff i mean there is some interest in expanding like someone had um donated to us in perfect condition this um 2000 compact system um which you know we so we kept it because maybe we did want to have that as an exhibit so that's an exception where there's something that's notable that's in good condition that may someday be um we want to display but we are very selective about it just because, you know, the more years we expand, the more we have to store that. Um, so yes, we do have homebrew machines. Um, our collection, uh, as I'm look, thinking about it at the museum, we have pieces from a Univac one. Um, we normally we used to have a picture of ENIAC is sort of our, our heritage um, because uh, John Mockley had actually worked at Camp Evans briefly before he went and retired and created the um, ENIAC. We have pieces of a Univac. We have a Bendix G15, which is vacuum tube based. We have a George Philbrick machine, which is also vacuum based. It's an analog machine. We have Univac 1219B. That was a system that was uh, commonly used on naval ships for ballistics control. So, you know, this plane's coming, it's gonna figure out where to shoot it, how to shoot it, and account for everything about the curvature of the earth and trajectory and humidity and everything. Um, we have a PDP-8, uh, it's actually working. Um, we have a uh, IBM, what is it, 10, what is it? Uh, the first mini computer that I, I, IBM called as a mini computer. Uh, we have the Wang 4000. We have a HP 1000. And then we have, yes, we have the homebrews. We have um, the Selby. We have the, in the Radio Electronics Magazine, the TV typewriter. Um, the SWTPC. We have the Sol 20. Uh, the Altair, um, the IMSI. Uh, we have actually a PDPA clone that someone had created. It was like a sort of a custom system. Um, we actually going to try to get someone to get that to work. It would be very interesting. So we do have homebrew computers of, of the early to mid 70s. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, if I can just add from like a personal note, um, yes, go ahead. I'd like to thank uh, Al and uh, and 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 Al's uh, co co-workers uh, for putting together TCF for all these years. I've been going to TCF since the late '70s as a as a teenager. Um, you know, my 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 the reason I'm into vintage computing now is because I started so early. And uh, I'd like to thank all, you know, again, Al and, and, and everyone else for uh, all their their efforts over the years in keeping this going. 
Um, I think for us, for a lot of us, and we're not all older, right? I'm in my mid fifties. So of course I was around when, when the microcomputer era started, although I was very young, we do have a lot of younger members as well that are, are interested in seeing, you know, how we got to where we are. Um, right. We, you pick up a modern mobile phone or, or a modern laptop, uh, tablet, and it's really the, the inner workings are incomprehensible to someone who's not a technologist. They have no idea what's going on under the hood. So part of our mission is we're trying to um, uncover that, right? Lift the veil and say, hey, look, these new computers aren't any different than what we had before. They're smaller, faster. Yes, there's new technologies that have enabled all this, but at their core, they're still computers with processing, storage, input, output, um, communications. So that, that's part of the reason why we, um, we, we exist, right? We, we're foremost an, a, an educational uh, organization. And um, as I said, myself and, and a lot of us are uh, very passionate about that so that we, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, 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 we show these things to people and, um, you know, opening up a, the hood of, a, of the lid of a computer and showing people the components and saying, and, and drawing that line between where we were and where we are now. And it, it's so gratifying to see the light come on, right? Because you're lifting that veil of mystery and you can't open up an iPhone and figure out how it works. But I can open up a Commodore 64 and I can show you the CPU and the memory and the IO chips. So it's, um, that, that's, that's really a big reason why we exist. Just wanted to add that. Yeah, thanks, Dean. Um, you know, Al had said about InfoAge, um, Yes, it's, um, we find that, I mean, so InfoAge is the umbrella. There's multiple museums within InfoAge, including Da Vinci's Computer Federation Museum. Um, there's a radio history, there's World War II miniatures, there's military vehicles, there's a ship, shipwreck museum. So it's a lot of things that people, that we find people coming in the door saying, like, oh, I live in this town, I didn't know about this. I would drive by it and not know what it is. And I think InfoH does its best to advertise it. Um, and we are on the National Historic Monument list. And there's some other list of, you know, things that you can see in New Jersey, uh, but somehow people still miss it. Um, so they are doing their best. And one of the things that they're doing now, and I think is a great idea, um, you know, normally they, they get, uh, and they're always in need of money too, of donations, because operating the, just for the utilities, is very expensive. Uh, and they're always looking for donations, but in grants, but those are one shots. So you need to have people coming through the door. So they're, they're coming up with what they call the lecture series. And they're letting different organizations uh, come up with different people to talk. And so that actually, and people just pay the regular admission rate into the museum. Um, I believe it's I think it's $12 and then $7 for under 12 years old. Um, but they're trying to get people coming through the door, to, people to know about us. So if so someone is a lecturer, they're like, oh, well, let's see that person. And then they'll find out, oh, there's a museums in here and all these. And so they'll look at all the museums after the talk or before the talk and, and, and the word will spread. So I think that's the best way to do it is to, to get people coming through the door, people to know about us. Um, and it's actually going to be VCF's turn the third quarter of this year. So um, there are a number of speakers that couldn't make it or ones that um, I didn't have room for, but I wanted to invite. So I'm, I'm thinking about different speakers to invite sort of in the July, August, September area um, to come to InfoAge to give talks um, so that we can get more people there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff there. Um, the satellite dish is, you know, Princeton had actually got that thing to work. So you can actually um, bounce your voice off the moon. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff there. Um, and we're, you know, working with them to sort of help them. Um, so it's sort of a mutual thing. They let us have our warehouse space, our museum. Um, so yeah, InfoAge is definitely a diamond in the rough that not a lot of people know about. Now, you guys, uh, it would be nice, you know, to show some pictures of, of what's at InfoAge because it, uh, 
it, it, once you get there, it's really impressive. Yes. Um, yeah, people are like, you know, because it's, yeah, if, you, if you're looking at it from the, the road, you're just like, what is this? And, you know, there's a brick building and there's some other buildings and there's a fence thing going on there. Um, but yes, there's, it's, it's very interesting uh, to, to go there. So I recommend, you know, even if you're, you're not interested in vintage computers, there's interested a lot of other things there that people can see, you know, take the family and people spend hours there and they can't even see everything in one day sometimes. I've thought about getting a uh, kind of a consortium, uh, at least uh, an organization of all, the, of all the museum type things that are going on in New Jersey, because you, you know, you have the College of New Jersey you have the Sarnoff uh, Museum, basically, the collection of, of what Sarnoff did. Uh, and uh, that's open a couple days a week. Someone, you know, going could go that. You have the state, you know, how many people know the state police have a museum, which is quite interesting. Kids always like love police stuff. And they have a, uh, a, a state museum now going on right now. Do you know about the exhibit at, uh, at Morwin? Morvin? Oh, yes, I do. I actually went to that. Um, I had um, been invited there because I had made a con connection with them recently. So yes, the Ma Bell exhibits. Uh, it's, I think it's officially open now. They had unofficial opening to invited members. But that is, uh, yes, a very interesting exhibit. Um, I need to go back there when it's, you know, the opening was very crowded. And go back with my friend uh, who knows a lot about the, the engineering aspects. Uh, but there's a lot of connections to local history, uh, which is great. You have, um, you know, uh, the Bell Labs in Homedale, and um, there was one up north, and there was also one actually local to me. There's like a deal test site. I didn't know what this thing was, it's, I know it was historically significant. Um, and Marconi is connected to Marconi too. So there's a lot of um, a lot of history there uh, that's connected us into New Jersey, and we, we try to highlight that where we can. Uh, someone's asking what dates are upcoming. So right now we have VCF East, uh, which is April 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Um, we have a repair workshop. Um, we have a repair workshop next weekend. Uh, 26th and 27th. That's also info H. Um, hey, Jeff, Jeff, you might also want to mention that going on along with our repair shop, info H is having a uh, make a little mini maker fair. Oh, yeah. So there's New Jersey Makers Day is are different museums and places across New Jersey, and info H is participating in that. So on March 26th, um, Dean and I and some others are going to be showing off five vintage computers. You can sit down and write basic programs. If you want to print it out, you can take it home. Um, so that is also a great thing to do. And that's sort of another way that they're sort of um, trying to get people in the door. Um, we're currently in planning for a swap meet and repair workshop at System Source. System Source is one of our uh, partner museums and uh, that's in near Baltimore, Maryland. It's north of Baltimore. That'll be June 18th and 19th. Uh, we still have to finalize the details. Uh, VCF West, uh, which is at Computer History Museum, August 6th and 7th. And our swap meet, we're gonna have another one. It's gonna be in October. I'm sort of thinking October 15th or 16th. Um, but uh, we still haven't, beyond that, we haven't scheduled any more repair workshops. So we're sort of like um, need to assess like the schedule and getting a little bit of rest after everything, but uh, that's sort of uh, what's going on right now. If you, if you want to see a few pictures, uh, I can share real quick uh, just a few videos here. We generally don't uh, post a lot of pictures of our museum uh, due to the fact that we really would love people to come and, and you know, visit. Uh, as was mentioned, there's no substitute for coming, uh, not just to see the Vintage Computer Museum, but as a uh, you know, Al kindly said, uh, you know, uh, InfoAge is a great place to come see. And uh, it's, uh, it's it's really worthwhile uh, to come and take a look. But I can um, I can just share a couple of tidbits here. Um, 
bear with me one second here. I apologize. How much time do we have, Al? Uh, you're appropriately asking that. Your time basically is up at this this minute. <laughs> All so right. I think, you know, we're going to have transition. I, I, I think our next speakers are probably here uh, that are coming up. Uh, I, I should go up and look and see, but I, I think uh, that they are here. Tal's here. So he's you're speaking next, right, Tal? Yes, Dr. Katz. So you guys.